Another really important topic around arrays and objects has to do with equality, checking for equality. Now we've seen the equality operator, strict equality, triple equals, and double equals. In this case, they both return true. Now let's talk about how they behave with arrays and objects. So let's make a variable. We'll just call it nums. I'm out of creative ideas for now, so just nums. And then we'll make another variable called mystery and it will be an identical looking array, one, two, three. What happens when I compare these two? If I run nums triple equals mystery, we get false. So they look the same to us. They contain the exact same values in the exact same order, but they are completely different in JavaScript's mind. And you might think that double equals would solve that, but it does not. This all hinges upon what we talked about earlier with reference types. When we have a variable called nums, the value of that variable, the little space in memory, is not storing the array. It's simply storing a reference to this array. So we can imagine that nums in memory has some long address to another part of memory where the actual array is stored. Remember, arrays can be very, very large, and they don't fit in a single variable, the, the allocated or the allowed space for a variable. So instead, JavaScript stores a reference to where that array is. So when we compare with double equals or triple equals, we're comparing these addresses. So mystery might look the same, but it has its own completely unique place in memory. Let me make these a little more distinct looking. There we go. So they are not at all the same, and this is what's being compared. So here's a question for you. How could I concoct a, a situation where two arrays were equal? When I ran triple equals or double equals, we got true. I would need to do something different. I could not define my arrays like this. What I would need to do is instead define mystery to be based off of nums. So instead of mystery, let's do let more nums equals nums. So now they have a reference to the same address in memory, the same place. And if I compare them here, if I refresh, nums triple equals more nums, that is true. It's also true with double equals. And if you recall back to the earlier video on reference types, if we change one of them, like more nums dot push for more nums is altered as is nums. They're referring to the same array in memory. So when we double or triple equals, they are identical. So what this means is if you're trying to compare arrays, if you're trying to see if an array is equal to another array, it's not as straightforward as you might hope it would be. Because a lot of times, you're not trying to check if an array is the exact same array. Instead, you often want to check if they look the same, if they contain the same information. Here's an example. Uh, I have a user object. It has a username and an email and notifications, which is an array. If I wanted to print something out, if notifications was empty, it would not work to do this. If user dot notifications triple equals empty array. I see students try this. It seems like it should make sense. It does not work for this same reason. Empty array triple equals empty array is false. They look the same, but each time I type empty array, it's a new place in memory. They look the same, but they are different. They have different addresses or different locations in memory. So this does not work, even though notifications is an empty array. So if I tried to console.log, no new notifications, it's not going to work. Now an empty array is an easy case because we have different strategies we could attempt instead. Instead of checking for equality to an empty array, we could say if dot length is equal to zero, we get no new notifications. But we could even shorten this more. If you remember, length will give us zero in this scenario, and zero is a falsy value. So we could say, if not, user.notifications.length. If there is no length, we get no new notifications. But now if there is something in here, like message is a notification, it doesn't print out. So the next thing that is a little trickier is trying to check if an array contains or looks like another array that isn't empty. So if I wanted to know if one array contained exactly the numbers 1, 2, and 3, in that order, we've seen this does not work. And unfortunately, there's not an easy option for us right now. Until we talk about loops, 
we don't really have a way of checking for array equality, equality of values. What we will need to do is manually compare every element in an array to another array. So if I wanted to know, does notifications look exactly like this, where we have message and what's another notification? Let's say, and alert. If I needed to do that, I would have to write code to say, is the first element message, is the second element alert? So we're not there yet, but at this point, what I want you to understand, and hopefully you're getting it by now, is that we cannot easily compare values in arrays if we're trying to look for equality. All that these operators, double and triple equals, will do is check for equality of reference, not equality of contents. And the exact same thing holds true for objects. If we make an empty object and we triple equals another empty object, they are not the same. The object A1 is not equal to the object A1 unless they are referring to the same place in memory, which we've seen before. If I had let data one equals a colon one, and then let data two equals data one, now they are referring to the same thing in memory. So we get true when we compare them. So arrays and objects behave exactly the same way in this situation when we're checking for equality.